So what will happen if abortion in Malta is decriminalized? Do you think that this will really help women? Why are they tr introducing this change in the law? For healthcare. We need to kill our baby for healthcare. Because they are trying to change the perception. As lit tavera, she said. This has, has to be one of the stupidest things I've heard in a very long time. She did not deny it. She said, this is supposed to be the safest place for an unborn child. See through the lies that they are feeding us. Do not be fooled. Hello everybody. We, we saw in the news on TV that recently one of our politicians in Maltese Parliament has proposed a bill to decriminalize abortion. And I would like to um, ask this question. Is this in the best interest of us women? for us women? Is this in the best best interest for our country? In, um, in your heart, do you think, do you believe that it is legally okay to purposely kill or to take the life of your son or daughter uh, just because they're in our womb? Do you think that this should be our rights? And will you be comfortable in a Malta that no longer protects the unborn child, that no longer protects us women from the, the trauma of abortion? Do you think that this will really help women? Do you think that we should tolerate it, that we should accept it as part of our Maltese law to decriminalize abortion and therefore by default to legalize abortion? Yes, it is our body that new life begins, but is it our right to determine whether this life, our son or daughter, continues to live or to die? Because reality is, it is our body, it is our womb, but that is a child and that is somebody else. It is not us. So therefore, it is another human being. Women were created to give life, not to take life. And abortion goes against our womanhood. And not only does it suppress us and hurt us, but it causes a life of trauma and pain. I have met many women and heard them crying and mourning for the loss of their child. They certainly say that this abortion was not empowering for them. It did not give them the ability and the freedom to choose their destiny. It hurt them and it was traumatic and they have spent years of counseling to try and be, to try and forgive themselves for what they did and to forgive those who pressured them also into this abortion. So I ask you, why are the Maltese politicians proposing this new law in Malta? They're saying that we need this new change in the law that to remove abortion from the crime list and add it to the healthcare list because there are women being thrown into prison, being taken to court because they've had abortions. Do you hear this? Do you know somebody? Do you know a woman in Malta who's had an abortion and has been thrown into prison? I haven't. So why are they tr introducing this change in the law? If, if there have been a few, why do we need to change the law for just a few? How about we work on a law to protect women? And how about we work on the law to, pray, put, to strengthen this law to protect women from the harm of an abortion? To protect the unborn child, not a descendant, but an unborn child. My message to those women who have had abortions is not a message of condemning or judging, but a message of encouragement to speak up, to share your story that abortion did not help you, to seek healing, to seek counseling, because there is hope to, um, for you to forgive yourself for this, um, this act. And we are there, and there are services here in Malta that can help you, that will not condemn you. Another excuse that this person is using to propose this new bill is that women need abortion for health reasons, for health care. We need to kill our baby for health care. Do you hear of a mother here in Malta dying because abortion is inaccessible? Do we hear this? No, we do not hear it because our doctors here in Malta do their utmost to put the life of the mother as priority. They will always protect the mother and the child, but if need be, if the mother needs intervention, they will do what is necessary to put the life of the mother first. They always give her the intervention needed, the medication she needs. Of course, always trying to save the life of the baby, but the mother's life is always given priority. Whereas an abortion is the deliberate act, the deliberate killing of the unborn child. 
So we don't hear our mothers dying. We don't hear, we don't need abortion as healthcare because our, our healthcare already protects our mother 100%. She, they will always protect the life of the mother. So this is not having an abortion. This is not an abortion. An abortion is the direct attack on the child. The direct attack which leaves the child dead. So, so a doctor here in Malta will do whatever it takes to try and save both. But if need be, the mother's life is first. And abortion does the opposite. Abortion is a direct killing of an unborn child. We can never call it healthcare. It is the opposite of healthcare because it destroys life. It cannot be healthcare. It cannot be lied and hidden and sugar-coated under the name healthcare. It is the opposite. It destroys life. It does not give life. So why are they proposing this law to decriminalize abortion if we don't need it for a woman's health care because it can never be called health care? Women are not being thrown into prison. Why? What's their agenda? What is their agenda to change the law and to decriminalize abortion and to place it on the health care section, which can never be done? Why? Because they are trying to change the perception they're trying to change this perception of abortion and start portraying it as something good and not a crime. Something we women need. Something that gives us freedom, that helps us to choose our destiny. How about we speak to the women who have had abortions and we'll see how it helped them choose their destiny. Something that will give us true choices. As lit tavera, she said. And when Marlene Farooja was asked if this change in the law would lead to abortion, she did not deny it. She said, She's saying it straight out. She's making it very clear that this is just the door opening. And don't hold your breath. Eventually, if, if women like her get their way, abortions will be performed with our taxpayers' money. Let us not be fooled. This is a big lie. They have an agenda and they want abortion on demand. And they will start this simply by changing the law, from changing it as a crime and putting it on our health care. And they know that if they don't get abortion off the list of crimes, they will not be able to get abortion normalized. So there is a lie behind all of this. Yes, we want choices. We agree with choices. We are pro having variety in life, but not all choices are good. Some choices are harmful. Some choices to kill, to steal, to bully. These things, these, these choices will harm us, us and others. And we don't need these choices to be free or successful. Not all choices are good for us. And just because these choices are not available to us, it doesn't mean we are oppressed. Some things are just not good and they are wrong. And so they should never be given as a choice and they should be avoided. This goes against, abortion goes against what it means to be a woman, to give life, to protect, to love. And so we should stop or they should stop trying to rebrand abortion as something that will set us women free as it will not work. It is not healthcare. It is not a medical service. We do not need to kill our own children to move forward in life. We do not need it. So what will happen if abortion in Malta is decriminalized? It would just put more pressure on us women to have more abortions. It will give abusive husbands what they want. They, they don't want to have a baby when it's not convenient for them. They, they will pressure us into having abortions. Our irresponsible boyfriends don't want the responsibility of having a child. It will pressure us into having abortions. Our employer doesn't want us, to, doesn't, isn't impressed with our request to have maternity leave because it's not convenient for them. It will pressure us into having abortions. What else will happen? These so-called pro-choice, pro-abortion doctors will take the easy way out. Instead of giving the treatment necessary to protect both mother and child, they will insist and ins encourage and push and pressure a mother to opt for an abortion. What about the rapist? Wow, th there goes their evidence, the evidence to, f to, to criminalize them for their act. This is what abortion will do for women.
It will just suppress us. It will not empower us. There will be a social pressure that women have to be at the convenience of everybody else. So more consequences by decriminalizing abortion is just the abortion industry will continue to make money off us women. And women will continue to suffer, to suffer the consequence of having an abortion, the knowledge of knowing that our baby was ripped out of our womb violently. And society will continue to suffer because this hurts all of society. This is supposed to be the safest place for an unborn child. If our children are not protected and are not safe in the womb of the mother, who is safe in this world? We must do our utmost to protect the child and also the mother. They need our help and support. My parents migrated to Australia like many Maltese. And so we lived in Australia where abortion is, is on demand. And are you telling me, and I know firsthand, that that does not free a woman. It does not empower us women. Here in Malta, I am safe. I'm so happy and I'm so safe because I know what it, what it feels like to live in a country where abortion is given, is offered up until the day of birth. And now I can compare and I know that here in Malta, we have the most beautiful law where we are protected, us women are protected, our, our babies are safe and we are supported. Let's not give this away, Malta. This is what we need to do. We need to continue protecting this law and continue empowering women to protect life, to love life and to be proud of these, this gift, this wonderful um, creation that we have inside of us. So what should we and our politicians in Malta be focusing our energy on? Supporting women supporting them in their crisis pregnancies, protecting us from abortion, helping us when we can't see another way, educating us on the value of our bodies, on the value of life, on our, the value of being a woman, educating us on how to protect our children. And instead, we need to hold those who commit abortions, these doctors, these healthcare professionals, we need to ensure that they are held accountable for, create, for, for committing such crimes on us women, those who harm us women and our unborn babies. On another note, Marlene Faruja said in an interview uh, that she sees no difference between pro-lifers and pro-abortionist, pro-choices. Uh, this has has to be one of the stupidest things I've heard in a very long time because pro-life, us pro-lifers, we are committed to supporting women, to helping them, to providing for them all they need in order to get through a crisis, no matter it be a one-month crisis, a two-year crisis, whatever it be, that is what it means to be pro-life, to help and support a woman no matter what, to protect their child and to give them all they need to live their life, to empower them, to make the right choices they need to have a better life. Pro-life also means that we love life no matter who it is, no matter how old, no matter if they are born or unborn, we want to support and we promote your right to life. What is pro-choice? It is the, you, you're insisting, you're fighting, for, you're fighting for the right to kill a child. Being pro-abortion simply means you want the ability to kill a human being. So let's call a spade a spade, women of Malta. Let's see through the lies that they are feeding us. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. Let us continue protecting life. Let us continue supporting women. This is what we are known for. Malta loves life. Maltese women love life and we will continue to do so. Use your voice. Raise your voice. Now is the time, not later. Now is the time. So let's be honest with ourselves do we want to continue to help women let's keep abortion out of malta so if you like this message and you'd like to spread share the word we ask you to share this video but also to use your voice and make your own video speak to people i encourage you to help and support those organizations who are truly pro-life and truly pro-woman 
who support women and give them the empower, empowerment they need to, to love life, to protect life. If you haven't joined the group Women Pro Women Malta, we invite you to join the group and to support each other, to keep life sacred, to stand up, to take a stand and to truly, truly be pro-woman here in Malta. Thank you.